Authors Plus. Hey, it's Benji Cole, son of Al Cole from CBS Radio, welcoming you to another edition of People of Distinction, the talk that gives an in-depth view of some of the most dynamic, intelligent, and successful people on the planet. And on the line with us today, we have Mitra Thompson. We'll be discussing her book, From Tiran to the Land of the Free, Struggles of an Iranian to Live Up to Her Potential. Available at publishing website, AuthorsPress.com. But do yourself a favor. If you want to get everything that Mitra has to offer, go directly to her personal website, BooksByMitra.com. That's B-O-O-K-S-B-Y-M-I-T-R-A. Dot com. There, even though you can't purchase the book, you'll be able to find more information on the book, more information on her. And you'll also be able to contact her directly through the website also. So once again, that's books by Mitra.com. And Mitra was brought to People of Distinction today by some of the best movers in the business. Authors, press publishing. If you have a book that you'd like moved, well, move it through Authors Press. You can find them at AuthorsPress.com. And guys, I am so excited to have Mitra here on the line because the book we're going to be discussing, From Tehran to the Land of the Free, Struggles of an Iranian to Live Up to Her Potential, is such an amazing book with an even better message, right? And what I love so much about it is really, keep in mind, we're going to be discussing this book and it's also, you know, of course... It's a memoir taken directly from her perspective, in her point of view. What makes it so great is, listen, as we know, America, the land of the free, is a melting pot, right? And it's filled with so many different people from so many different backgrounds, my family included, migrated here from other countries. So as she's talking about her experience Keep in mind the relevance to your experience and the connections that you'd be able to make through that. And it's such a great message. And who better to have here on the line to discuss it than her? So without further ado, let's bring Mitra here on the line. Mitra, first and foremost, thank you so much for being a guest with us today on People of Distinction. How are you? Thank you for inviting me. I am doing fine so far. Absolutely. Well, listen, we are very excited to have you here. Now, before we jump into the book, let's hold off slightly. Tell our listening audience a little bit about yourself. Sure. My name is Mitra Thompson, and I'm the author of the From the Trucker Return to the Land of the Free. I have been in the United States for the past 55 years, and I love it, actually. And I think that's the best place for me that I should have been from the birth, probably. And uh, I used to, I worked in the Veterans Administration Hospital for ter- more than 30 years as a chief medical technologist in the laboratory. And I retired from over there and uh, moved on to uh, North Carolina from Maryland uh, after my husband passed away. And that's when I decided at a certain point of my, in my life, I decided I should better write my uh, memoir because it was a healing process for me. And at the same time, with the inspiration that I got from my uh, daughter, wanted to know my background and wanted me to put it in writing, I decided in 2016, I write a memoir. What a fantastic, thank you so much, Mitra. Now, let's jump right in. From Tehran to the Land of the Free, Struggles of an Iranian to Live Up to Her Potential. Tell us a little bit about the book. Okay. The book talks first about the early childhood of mine. How I was brought up in a family with the conviction to the Baha'i faith. Now, Baha'i faith is a religion that is developed at the mid 19th century in Iran. And they have completely different ideas than the main uh, religion that is in Iran, which is a Muslim. Uh, by, by that I mean that they have a gender quality. They talk about progressive thought. They talk about equality between everything. They talk about education uh, for the female, for everyone. Actually, one of the things that they believe in 
if the parents cannot afford to send the child, all of them, to the college, they, the woman has the right, it's a better choice to be sent over there because she's the one that is raising the other children. So that was one of the things that it was made me very, very uh, familiar with the Baha'i faith that that's how my mind has to work on. Mm-hmm. The other things that uh, it felt is the freedom of what I wanted to do. I wasn't able to talk in, in, in Iran because my parents were saying that you have to watch your mouth, you have to watch what you're doing when you're in public because as a Baha'i, you're being persecuted all the time. And if they find out you're Baha'i, then no matter what you do, they're going to be persecuting you. So here I go to the school in the second grade, the Quran class, which is the holy book of the Muslims. The teacher says, who are the Baha'is in the, uh, in the class? And of course, my, my hand, stupid hand goes up. And she puts me in the corner of the room and with one leg standing for the whole hour and repeating the verses that she was teaching. And then at the end of the class, she told the other classmates that they were my friends. We would pray together to each other that uh, when she's going home, you're going to throw a stone at her. At her. Wow. And with that kind of a situation, I came home crying and telling them next time I'm going to take this stone and throw it back at them. And they told me, my parents told me, no, that's not the way we are. You do not do that. There is other ways that you can deal with it. Now, the other way that they taught me is you're going to love everyone no matter what. You're never going to create any conflict. You're not going to have any war between anyone. You're just going to be friendly, and but you're going to protect yourself by not saying anything in public. Public, in order that they find that if you're Baha'i. Because if you're Baha'i, definitely the persecution is going to start. So this is the way that I was brought up. And with that, I decided, okay, let me go through my life that way. And I learned it to how to go to and protect myself, even when I was working mm-hmm. in the government facility in Iran, which is not allowed any Baha'is in there. But I was so fortunate that the person who interviewed me was an American agricultural doctor rather than a Persian. Because that person that was supposed to interview me, she, uh, he was uh, sick and he couldn't make it. So here, this American, he couldn't care what my religion was, so he didn't ask me that. So I got hired in the agricultural department and I worked for him for two years and God bless his soul. It was because of his help that I will be, I, you can read it in the book, that I was able to get away from Iran and come to United States. In United States, oh my, I it was so much freedom, so much freedom from the first day when, when I walked in. I could walk out without having any chaperone. I could go to store buying things without having my father with me. But the language, of course, I didn't know much about it. That was the only thing that I had. It was an obstacle that I had to overcome. But it worked out. Eventually, it worked out. But I managed to succeed. And anywhere I wanted to do something and there was an obstacle, there was someone was helping me in order to overcome that obstacle. I didn't have that in Iran, except my family, in order to help me. But over here, I had everyone around me in order to help me with that. Mm-hmm. And that's very, very, very uplifting for me was that, my God, I can make better person out of myself. I can become someone different. Then I'm not going to be scared anymore. I'm not going to be uh, upset anymore that I cannot talk. And that uh, sometimes I talk too fast that people, they tell me, talk slowly. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Mitra, this is absolutely fantastic. You know, and it's so astounding listening to you, you know, you talk and show your experiences. Now, you know, this is definitely not something that 
is new to me specifically. You know, I, I have a lot of friends that come from either, you know, Middle Eastern background, Muslim background that way. So I'm familiar with a lot of the restrictions that they faced. But to hear it specifically from from yours. Now, you know, here's the thing. A lot of the friends that I have that are Muslim or, again, Middle Eastern descent, they're men. Right. And the, the male's experience is much, much different than the female's experience. So that, of course, is, you know, the, 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 the big the big difference there. That's fascinating. Mitra. Thank you so much. Now, the next question that we want to go into is talk to our listening audience about your inspiration. Now, inspiration in and of itself can take multiple forms. OK, so a what inspired you to write this particular narrative and also, what inspired you to embark upon a creative journey and become a writer? Okay. The, uh, the person who inspired me to write it down and put it down, it was my daughter. Because she was hearing me talking to my aunt about what, uh, what we were doing in Iran. And she said, I don't know anything about it. I know about my father's background but I don't know anything about your background Mm -hmm. is it possible that at least you put it in writing that I can show it to my kids also or it will be in the family and at that time I was internally kind of depressed because of loss of my husband of course but as it was affecting me physically by uh, I had rash all over my body constantly going to the doctor while I'm getting rash they were putting me on different kind of a test and they could find nothing on it. So I thought one day I decided, she's right. Let me go ahead and start putting something in writing. Probably that will eliminate that tension that I have inside by bringing it up because I'm crying so much. I would bring it up that way by writing it through. And guess what? That was the healing process for me. And I thought, writing that and writing it and I thought at the beginning it was hard it was very hard because probably it was about one paragraph and it's one day but later on it became much easier for me to put my thoughts in writing with crying and at certain time I decided let me ask her to read it to see if she if, if it makes sense to her or not mm-hmm. And I even showed it to some of my neighbors and to some of my friends, and they all told me, you have to publish it. You have to really publish it. So at that time, then I said, okay, I'm going to become very serious about it. And I started working much harder on it. By the end of the 2016, I finished the book. And by then, guess what? No rash, no more rash. I have not seen a doctor for any rash in my body. Wow. So I managed to remedy that problem through the bringing it up through the writing about it. That was one inspiration that I wrote. The other inspiration was the one that I have to make sure people, since they ask me so many times, what happened that I did come to United States? Well, I go to the college, I go to the University of Tehran, and the counselor usually interviews you. And of course, the very first thing is asking what religion you are. I said, Baha'i. And then they ask, he asked, uh, well, there's two things against you. One, you are being a female, the other one is the Baha'i. You can register as long as you sign this paper saying that you are Muslim very politely first of all i was shocked but very politely i got up on my feet and i said i don't need that kind of education any kind of education actually Mm -hmm. that tells me that i have to get uh, rid of my fate thank you very much and i left the room but then i started thinking what i'm supposed to do i go to work next day on the next day when i go to work the American doctor, I have been with him for two years. He never asked me, why am I not going to United States? He never asked me what, what I'm doing at, uh, in, in Iran. 
why don't I, I, I do something? Why, why didn't I get married? Never. Even though I have seen their family, I have ate with, friend, with their family, with his family, but none of them. And all of a sudden he's asking me, why, why are you here? Why, can't you, why don't you go to college? Then I told him the story what happened. Then he says, okay, bring your passport and tomorrow we're going to go over there to a counselor and we see if we can go. Now, let me tell you about this scenario. For past three days, before I go to apply for the university, I was dreaming that I'm walking somewhere and I'm seeing a white house. I didn't know it was a white house in Washington, D.C. I didn't see any flag on it, but it was a huge house, just like the White House. And this is three nights in a row I'm dreaming that, and my cousin, who was in England as a, a, a student exchange, mm -hmm. I was, it was, she was behind me, and I was saying, come on, come on with me. She, she was behind me, but she said, no, you go first, I will follow you later. So here he says, bring your passport with me because three times I went to the counselor, American counselor, and he put denied because your father went there as a visitor and stayed in the United States. I'm not going to let you to go, to go there. Okay. Wow. So I, I was so happy. I brought my uh, passport and next day he drove me to the council, to the embassy. Uh, when we are over there, Counselor, as soon as I saw him, he says, You again? I'm, I told you I, I'm not going to let you to get out of this country. You're not going to go to the United States. And he said, In what account? He said, Because yeah, she, she, her father went in there and, uh, in the United States. And he stayed there. He says, But did you know that he, she's over 18 years old and you cannot hold her back? You are illegally push, uh, holding someone back and I'm going to report you to the United States. That counselor immediately picked up the stamp and put the uh, uh, approved. And that was through divine intervention. First the dream, then they come to him asking the question, and then the stamp goes on it. Within nine days, I was out of there, out of United States. I, I loved that doctor oh my god i appreciate i hugged him so much because he met, he was the only person who was instrumental for me to be able to get out of the united states and bring my family even helped me to bring my family my rest of the family to united states here on the line with Mitra Thompson, we're discussing her book, From Tehran to the Land of the Free, Struggles of an Iranian to Live Up to Her Potential, available at AuthorsPress.com or directly through her personal website, BooksByMitra.com. Now remember, you can't purchase it from her personal website, but you can gather more information on her and also the book, and then go to AuthorsPress.com to purchase the book directly from there. Now, really, I mean, the only other question that we can go into and the last question to really tie everything up is what is, I mean, listen, there's so many messages that we're able to pull just from this interview in and of itself, okay? And I'm sure the same thing will follow suit once our readers pick up your book. But to make it as concise as possible, what is one thing, one central message that you really want our listening audience here at People of Distinction to know about your book? It's the cultural and educational benefit that they get from reading this book. By that, I mean, by reading this book, the, re the reader will gain some kind of understanding of the enorm enormous disadvantage which is associated with the third world country culture. Third world country, I mean Iran, okay? Mm -hmm. And two of the most, uh, two of the most aspects of that is the privation of the lack of education, uh, lack of education and equal opportunity for any minority in Iran. Especially when the Baha'is was considered no citizen, there is no opportunities. 
the persecution in Iran towards the Baha'i was denying their job opportunities, freedom of expression, freedom of speech, freedom of uh, religious choices, and many other things. We were like a prisoner in our own place. And when it came to the higher education, the Baha'is, they decided, dog since he cannot go to college, they decided in the basement. Some of the professors and all that, that they graduated from the United States or Europe, they decided in their basement they are going to make a laboratory, they are going to conduct classes, higher education classes, like a university classes, for the Baha'is in order they take advantage of it. And they made deals with the universities in the United States, in Europe, and all that, to give them degrees. Mm-hmm. There are two, two actually, uh, Baha'is that came from that kind of a school, and one is working now in FDA as an engineer, and then the other one is working in the computer, in the IBM, that they actually grad, they took those courses. However, when per- Persians, uh, when uh, 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 government would hear about these things, they would come and trash and destroy everything in that house. And here they, uh, Baha'is, they had to start another, in another basement, they start all those things again. And this all has been going on for the past, you can say, since the revolution. Has been going on all the time. And, but still, we are, they are not, we are not giving up because education has been more important to us than anything else because that's where we can find our own way of living according to our taste according to us or to what we want as a freedom in our lives. Absolutely. What a wonderful message to take us out on. Listen, Mitra, this has been, as I say that this has been absolutely astounding and so inspirational guys, as I stated, when we first started this interview, whether or not you can personally relate to her circumstances understand that again as i stated america is a melting pot right i mean that's the coined phrase that we have uh, synonymous with our country we're a culmination of so many different backgrounds and more often than not you'll probably be able to relate if not specifically your family will be able to relate at some point because listen you go back far enough we all migrated here to this country right and Learning from her experience is just one side of it. Understand the comparisons that you're able to make and the relationship that you're able to form that way. Mitra, you are just one astounding example of so many people that have migrated to this country and have been able to, through their own struggles of adversity, been able to formulate success in a living embodiment of a person of distinction and we are so grateful that we were able to have you here on the line to share your story with us so guys one last time mitra thompson discussing her book from tehran to the land of the free struggles of an iranian to live up to her potential available at authorspress.com mitra thank you so much for being a guest with us today on people of distinction thank you very much Thank you for giving me the opportunity, yes.